Fish in a Tree, Chapter 3, Never Up to Me. Leaning against the wall in the hallway, I stay quiet. Some little kids walk by, reminding me that I'm in sixth grade, the highest grade at this school, but I feel like a baby. Allie, do you have anything to say? Mrs. Silver asks. I'm afraid to open my mouth because sometimes things just come out that get me in more trouble. Finally, she suggests that we go to her office. I sit in the principal's office, staring out the window, silent. I wonder what it would be like to be able to relax at school and not have to worry every second of every minute. I wish I had my sketchbook of impossible things. It's the only thing that makes me feel like I'm not a waste of space. I like to watch the pictures in my head become real in my book. My recent favorite is a snowman that works in a furnace factory. And then I decide that the craziest, strangest, most unbelievable thing I could ever draw is me doing something right. Mrs. Silver sighs, brings me back to reality. <sighs> Between last year and this year, you've been here for less than five months, Allie, and you've visited me far too much. You need to make some changes, she says. I sit silent. It's up to you. It's not up to me. It's never been up to me. Mrs. Silver's talking is like background noise, like the radio in the car. I don't have any words to explain. It was a mistake, and I'm ashamed, and I don't feel like sharing that with her. She takes a breath. Do you think it would be funny? I shake my head. Did you want to hurt her? I look up quickly. No, I wouldn't hurt her. I just... And I wonder what I've wondered before. Should I just tell her? It's like my chair is over a trap door, and there's a button to drop myself. I want to, but I'm afraid. I look up at her, looking at me, all disappointed, again. And I think there's no use. They already think I'm a pain, so I add dumb to their list. It's not like they could help me anyways. How can you cure dumb? And so I look out the window again, remind my mouth to keep shut. I've learned from the seven, seven different schools I've been to that it's better to stay quiet, never argue unless I really have to. I realize that both of my hands have curled into tight fists and Mrs. Silver is looking at them. She sits down in the chair next to me. Allie, sometimes it seems that you just want to get in trouble. She leans forward a bit. Do you? I shake my head. Come on, Allie, tell me what's going on. Let me help you. I look at her quick and then away and I mumble, no one can help me. That's not true, will you let me try? She points at a poster on the wall. Can you read that for me please, she says, out loud. The poster shows two hands reaching for each other. Great, probably some sappy saying about friends or sticking together or whatever. I don't even have funny friends. Come on Allie, read it for me please. The letters on the poster look like black beetles marching across the wall. I could probably figure most of them out, but I need a lot of time. And when I'm nervous, I forget it. My great brain glows blank like an etch-a-sketch, turned upside down and shaken, gray and empty. Well, what does she say? She asks, asks again. I don't need to read it to you. I get it, I say, trying to bluff, staring her dead at the eyes. Believe me, I know all about it already. I don't know about that kiddo. I think you might need to work on it a bit. Now I wish I knew what the poster said. I don't look at it, though. Then she'll want me to talk more about it. The bell rings. Mrs. Silver rakes her hair with her fingers. Allie, I don't know if you thought the card would be funny or you are upset that Mrs. Hall's leaving or what, but it feels like you've crossed the line this time. I imagine myself crossing the finish line, my body breaking that bright yellow ribbon. The crowd cheering as confetti spins through the air. But I know this is not what she means. As of Monday, your new teacher will be Mr. Daniels. Let's try to avoid any negative consequences, okay? I think about how me avoiding consequences would be, like the rain avoiding the sky. She waves me out and I stand. I look at that poster again. I wish I knew what it was. I should learn because I know that I should know a lot more than I do. She sighs as I leave her office, and I know she's tired of me. Even I'm tired of me. As I run from the office, the hallways are filling with kids. I head back to my classroom to apologize to Mrs. Hall before the buses leave. 
I run up behind her and tap her on the shoulder. When she turns and looks at me, her face goes sad before straightening out. I stand there thinking how sorry I am, I hoping she doesn't think I'd wish anything bad on her baby. But I can't find the words. My mind does the etch-a-sketch thing. Blank. What is it, Allie? She finally asks. She puts her hands on her big belly like she needs to protect it. I turn and run out of the room, down the hall and out the front door. The bus is all pulling away without me. But that's the way it should be, I guess. I deserve to walk all that long way and all by myself.